And it's seven o'clock, so I'm going to start the session now. The session is being recorded. Um, I hope you're all doing well. OK, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much for confirming that. OK, so tonight we are going to look at the LM curve. It's in learning unit four. Um, so I just want to give some background. It's quite a short section, so I thought I'll do some revision just to make the time worth your while. So um, the learning units in this model work like building blocks. So you are unable to start a learning unit if you didn't understand the content of the preceding learning unit. So in learning unit two, you did the goods market. In learning unit three, you did the financial market. And then now in learning unit four, these two markets are coming together in the ISLM model. And tonight we are all supposed to be only looking at the LM model, but like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of revision so that we all know what's going on by the time that we get to this part. So just like one step back, I feel with this module, it's often such a lot of detail that you can often get bogged down with the detail and you forget what you are doing. So macroeconomics deals with the economy as a whole. So it's not the decisions and behaviors of individual con consumers and households and firms. And what we are doing in this model is we're trying to use theoretical models with set assumptions to determine the level of output and income and the impact of your policies, your fiscal and monetary policy on the level of output and income. So we are developing a macroeconomic model to explain change in the real GDP, your level of output and income by applying your policies. OK, so let's just do a recap of your goods market. So in the goods market, um, the model shows that how the demand for goods is determined, um, how the demand for goods determines the level of output and income in the economy. So what you did there, you had your demand equation and that the equation said the demand for goods is equal to your consumer spending, investment spending and government spending. And then we moved on to expand this equation to get um, you broke all these components down into the, um, the smaller parts that made them up. And we were able to simplify the demand equation that it exists of autonomous spending and your induced spending. And then we moved forward even further and we we went to calculate the equilibrium in the goods market so that space where your demand for goods is equal to your level of output and income and this is the equation that we used for the equilibrium in the goods market and so it this equation tells you that the equilibrium level of output and income is a multiple of autonomous spending and this portion was the multiplier then you are also able to um, draw the demand equation on the on a diagram, remembering that your x axis at the demand for goods and your y axis at the level of output and income. And you were able to see that your autonomous spending was the intercept and your uh, marginal propensity to consume gave you the slope of this curve. And then further, you were able to, to um, indicate the equilibrium point by showing where on this curve is the point where your, um, where your demand for goods is equal to your level of output and income, and that was your equilibrium point. And then you were also able to, um, to see that the change, this equilibrium point <clears throat> will change if your marginal propensity to consume change, because then the slope of this curve will change. So the for example, if he moves down, he will cross this line at a different spot or if the autonomous spending component changes because then this um, this um, graph will move up or down depending on what happens with this. Again, making your equilibrium point to change. OK, and then just um, and on this portion, you've got access, uh, excess demand. And on this area, you've got excess supply. So the economy will rec correct itself by moving towards this equilibrium point. <clears throat> so that was the gist of learning unit two, the goods market. Then the recap of the financial market. So the financial market shows that the level of output and income determines the demand for money. So remember in the, in the goods market, we said that your 
um, the, the demand for goods is determined by the level of outcome and income. And over here, you are learning now that the level of output and income um, determines the demand for money. So you um, learned about the demand for money equation, which we um, said was the demand for money is a function of the level of output and income and the interest rate. And the positive correlation as your level of output and income increases, if your demand for money increases, you are able to do more transactions or wanting or willing to. And then the negative relationship between the interest rate and the demand for money, because as your interest rate increases, your, um, your willingness to save maybe increase and your willingness to keep my money in the mo most liquid form reduces, so your demand for money takes down. You also learned in Learning Unit 3 how to draw the money demand curve. So you've got your interest rate on the x-axis and your quantity of money on the vertical axis, on the horizontal axis. And um, you will see from this graph, as your interest rate increases, at this point, your demand for money is less than at a lower interest rate at this point, for example, where you've got a higher demand for money. Then the level of the money demand curve we learned is um, determined by the level of output and income. So on this line, your demand for money is impacted by the change in the interest rate for all the same levels of output and income. And this is at a higher level of output and income. So what we said in our model, the assumption we made is that the quantity of money is endogenously determined, so it's a demand determined. So we assume by this model that the quantity of money is equal to the money demand. So the central bank can directly influence the quantity of money by influencing the interest rate, which in turn affects the cost of credit and loans and the demand for money. And therefore the um, equilibrium level in the financial market was at this point where your quantity of money is equal to your money demand. And we say, therefore, it's impacted by the level of output and income and the interest rate. So this is learning unit three in a nutshell. All the graphs and the diagrams and the formulas. OK, so then let's have a recap on the policies that we are going to consider. The one is fiscal policy. So fiscal policy is the actions by government that impacts the level of outcome and income via the goods market and your instruments being used are your government spending and taxes. So if we consider expansionary fiscal policy, this is the policy implemented to stimulate economic activity. So you want your level of output and income or your GDP to increase. And how you do that is you increase the demands for goods in the economy by increasing government spending or by reducing taxes. Because if your taxes are lower, your disposable income increases, which means your demand for goods increase. On the counter side, a contractionary fiscal policy, the aim of that policy is to cool down economic activity. And you do that um, by decreasing government sp spending or increasing taxes with the aim of decreasing the demand for goods in the economy and thereby lowering your level of output and income. OK, let's move on to monetary policy. <clears throat> monetary policy is the actions by the monetary authorities that impacts the monetary balances in the financial market. And the main policy instrument is the interest rate. So if we look at expansionary monetary policy, again, this is expansionary policy. So you want to stimulate economic activity. You want to increase the level of output and income. How you do that? You do that by decreasing the interest rate. And the reason for that is a decrease in the interest rate decreases the cost of credit in the economy. So you are able to increase the demand for money or your active balances and the demand for goods in the economy. And so the level of output and income increases. And the counterpart, a contractionary monetary policy, and you do that by an increase in the interest rate. And um, the interest in the interest rate, increase in the interest rate increases the cost of credit in the economy and also decrease the demand for money or active balances. So the demand for goods 
um, goes down and your level of output and income decreases. Okay, so now let's do the ISL model. So in learning unit four, we are still looking at the level of output and income, and it's determined by, in the short run by combining the goods market with the financial market. So let's consider the goods market. We said um, this is called the IS relation, and it's derived from your, your, your demand curve and your um, demand for goods formula, and also then equilibrium in the goods market, while your LM curve will be derived from your financial market, like we've done in the previous slides, so your um, equilibrium in the financial market. Okay, so if you do consider the IS relation, I think you did this last week, so it's just a recap. So the IS curve represents the good mar goods market, as I've said before, and it shows different combinations of the interest rate and the level of output and income where the goods market is in equilibrium. So if you consider your, um, your goods market diagram, you know this point is where the goods market is in equilibrium, where the demand for goods is equal to the level of output and income. So your IS curve is literally made up of all these points of the different values for your level of output and income at different interest rates where this market is in equilibrium. So this point will be one of the points on this IS curve. Okay, then we get a movement along the IS curve when the interest rate changes. So for example, if you consider your IS relation, you can see this is the expanded relation of all the um, components that make up your demand for goods. So then an in, um, uh, when the interest rate changes, there, it'll be a, there will be a, a change in investment and the subsequent change in investment will result in the change in consumption spe spending, which will change your demand for goods and the level of output and income. So this is when your interest rate changes, your um, through this relationship, you will move to different points on the IS curve. A shift of the IS curve will um, happen if any of the autonomous factors changes. Okay, then, so we are moving closer now to the LM curve, which we are focusing on tonight. So let's first consider the um, what we are being busy with. We are in the process of constructing a model that shows how the level of output and income are determined by the interaction between the goods market, the IS curve that we've done in the previous slide, and the financial market represented by the LM curve. So let's just consider our equilibrium in the financial market again. So we said it's the quantity of money is equal to money demand. So it's your quantity of money is equal to your, is a function of your nominal um, level of in, output and income and the interest rate. And then you can rewrite this portion, the nominal income, with PY. So it's literally RY equals PY. You're just replacing that because your nominal income equals the price level times your production. Um, so you just replace this portion with your price level times production um, components. And then you can move towards calculating the equilibrium in the financial market in real terms. So this formula gave you the equilibrium in nominal terms. We, we literally just, we, we used our um, quantity of money equation that you know from learning unit three, and we just replaced the nominal portion with the price, with the formula that's used to calculate it, price times real. And now to move towards real terms, you divide it by the price level because um, and this tells you then, so if you, if you divide, if you take M equals P, Y, L in brackets, I, if you take this formula, which means the um, quantity of money is equal to the nominal income, uh, it's a function of the nominal income and the interest rate. So to get this to the real um, equilibrium level, you divide on both sides with your price level. 
So you will have your M divided by P on this side. And if on this side you divide by B, you are left over with your, um, uh, your in production and your um, interest rate component. So it means that it's a function of your real income and the interest rate. And the, the reason we do this is so that we can express your quantity of money demanded in terms of its purchasing power, in terms of the goods, so that we can end up combining the IS and the Allen curve. Okay, so then to derive the Allen curve, we will follow the approach where the South African Reserve Bank directly targets the interest rate. So in South Africa, you know, the South African Reserve Bank chooses the interest rate. In turn, that affects the cost of credit and loans, which in turn um, affects the demand for money and the quantity of money. So I don't know if some of you are repeating this course. In the past, you would have seen your alum curve was upward sloping like this. And the reason for that was that we didn't use the approach, um, we didn't use the model based on the approach used by the African Reserve Bank. It was based on the change in the, in, uh, the uh, level of output and income and how that affects your um, money demand. So in this model, the alum curve is a straight line, reason being the South African Reserve Bank sets the interest rate. The interest rate doesn't go up and down as there is a higher demand for bonds. We don't use that model anymore. So irrespective of the level of outcome and income in the economy, the interest rate stays the same. And then your shift of the Allen curve only occurs when the central bank decides to change the interest rate. So if he um, increases the interest rate, your Allen curve moves up. If he reduces the interest rate, the Allen curve moves down. So an example in the media where you can see South Africa central bank um, impacting the interest rate will be the 25 May 2023 um, announcement where the South African central bank raised the um, repo rate by 50 points to 8.25%. And this is quite high, it's the 14 year high. This type of decision to increase the interest rate is a contractionary monetary policy because the increase in the repo rate increases the interest rate and the cost of credit in the economy and consequently the demand and the quantity of money decreases and your level of output and income also decreases. Okay, so this is what we were supposed to cover this evening. The important thing that you should know from this um, section is that the current LM curve as you are studying it in this module is based on the monetary policy as is applied by the South African Reserve Bank and that's where they directly target the interest rate. Um, so you've got a flat um, straight line LM curve. But let's move a little bit forward to see where we are going and which will help you for next week's lesson. And this is to put the two together. So you would see from our previous um, graph uh, slides, you had a look at the goods market and we said from there your IS curve was derived and we said you did cover that last week already. And then this week, I again showed you your financial market. We looked at the formula as well as the diagram and we then said that from there the Allen curve is based on the interest rate as set by the South African Reserve Bank. So that value and this value, this interest rate values are the same. Then what you do is you literally you see both the IS curve and the Allen curve are plot on the in with the interest rate on the X axis, the vertical axis and the level of output and income on the horizontal axis. So you combine the two graphs, you literally put them on one graph and your interest rate, the level where your LM curve will be going will be the same rate as was set by the South African Reserve Bank or by the Reserve Bank. And then um, point A will be on this graph. 
will be your equilibrium point where both the financial market and the goods market is in equilibrium. So just consider that again, your um, IS curve was the position of all the equilibrium in the goods market points. It's based on this relationship where your level of output and income is equal to your demand for goods, which is equal to your consumption, investment spending and government spending. And your Allen relationship, your Allen curve is based on equilibrium in the financial market and it's based on your where your demand for money is equal to your supply for money. And that is a function of your real income and the interest rate. So still we are trying to determine the level of output and income. And um, so this is the endogenous variable and it will be in this model in the learning unit four model is the short term point where both your financial market and your goods market is in equilibrium will be at point A. OK, so let's move on to some activities on the LM curve. So on page 132 of the study guide, there are these this question questions from activity 4.8. So let's move through all of them. So the first one is to derive the LM curve. The level of output and income has to be changed. True or false? And it is of course false because remember we said that was the old um, the previous years, they did use the LM curve on this, or they did derive the LM curve based on this approach. But currently, we are using your straight line LM curve because we say the South African Reserve Bank sets the interest rate, or the Reserve Bank sets the interest rate for our model. Okay, so the South African Reserve Bank chooses the interest rate, and therefore the LM curve is a horizontal line of the settled interest rate. That's true. Number C, if the central bank decides to increase the interest rate, the LM curve shifts downwards. So let's just think about that. The central bank increased the interest rate. That is false because if it increases the interest rate, remember from it goes from zero and higher. So if it increases the interest rate, the LM curve will not move downwards, it'll move upwards. OK, the focus in this model is that the central bank increases or decreases the nominal money supply in order to change the interest rate. That's false. Remember, they are setting the interest rate. An increase in government spending will shift the Allen curve upwards. Government spending, we said that was part of fiscal policy and it was mostly in the goods market because it was pertaining to your um, demand for goods. And so therefore, government spending deals with the IS curve and has no impact on the LM curve. LM curve is impacted by the interest rate. Fiscal policy will have no influence on the LM curve. That is true. That's exactly what we said in the previous one. And then number G, in the module we follow, the approach is that the central bank focuses directly on the interest rate. The central bank due to the certain interest rate and therefore the Allen curve is horizontal line at the value of the interest rate the central bank has chosen. That is true. OK, now we're going to move towards some of the revision assignments that you also have access to and consider those. So in our financial model, the Allen curve is illustrated by a horizontal line. Since why is this happening? You've got four options. The first one being the African Reserve Bank directly targets the interest rate. Second, level of output and income changes. Quantity of money demand does not have a relationship with the interest rate, and the interest rate is determined by the demand for money and the quantity of money. So only number one is correct, because remember, the South African Reserve Bank, or we are using the same model that South Africa is using and the other word for that is um, if, a, if a central bank um, targets the interest rate, the other word used for that is accommodation policy or refinancing of liquid 
equity, liquidity requirements. Remember? Okay, and then which one of the following factors will shift the alum curve upwards? Give you a time to think. Increasing marginal prices to consume, increase in the nominal quantity of money, decrease in investment spending, and the increase in the interest rate. It is number four. Only an increase in the interest rate, in other words, a contractionary monetary policy, will shift the alum curve upwards. The counterpart is also true. If you decrease the interest rate, uh, expansionary monetary policy, then the alum curve will move downwards. 